ಹಾನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಗೌರಾಂಗ ಗೌರ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಠಾಕುರ ಜಯ ಶಿಲ ಗುರುದೇವ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಠಾ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಜಯ ಶಿಲ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ರಾಧಾರಮನ ಹರಿ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಬೋ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಬೋಲ ಹರಿ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಬೋಲ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಬೋಲ ಹರಿ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಬೋಲ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಬೋಲ ಹರಿ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಬೋಲ ರಾಧರ ಮನ ಹರಿ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಬೋಲ ಹರಿ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಬೋಲ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಬೋಲ ಹರಿ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಬೋಲ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ
हरे बोल हरे बोल हरे बोल गौर हरे हरे बोल गौर हरे गौर नित्यानंद बोल गौर नित्यान गौर भक्त वृंद बोल हरि 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 गौर प्रेमानंद बोल हरि 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 बोल हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे हाँ हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे राधे गोविंद जय राधे श्री गुरु महाराज की हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण I'd like to thank the devotees for doing the bhajan. And I um, want to beg our guests to excuse any of our inadequacies in our organization right now. We're going to do something which to you might seem a bit strange. I'm going to actually invite this entire body of devotees to go outside because Gurudev's going to arrive in about five minutes and, and do the greeting thing. And they'll be rushing back in as quickly as they go out. But I think you'll be more comfortable just waiting here. <laughs> and they get a little bit out of control when Gurudev comes, you know. But <laughs> can be a little dangerous with the elbows and that sort of thing. Um, so um, Gurudev's coming in five minutes. What do you do? Haribo? <laughs> uh, don't go for your shoes. Leave your shoes as out of the way as possible and start the kirtan outside. Bolabai? Also, if we could remember that if there are any elderly guests coming, that we could leave some seats for them. If you're young and that the representative of the city of Birmingham be asked to say a few words first, like this. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much indeed. First of all, I would like to thank you for inviting the Lady Mayoress and myself to come and join you in this glorious day where you've come back to Birmingham, sir, and we're very delighted you've come back to Birmingham. I believe that Birmingham is the premier city of this country and therefore it deserves to have your presence among, in our midst from time to time and we are so grateful that you have come. We, we are a great cultural city and a diverse city and it adds to our life here in Birmingham when people like yourself can grace us so with your presence. I would just like to say finally thank you for coming and thank you for inviting me here today.
Hare Krishna, as all, most of the devotees know, when they make their pilgrimage every year, twice a year, three, four times a year to India, they have to go to the consulate and seek the proper visas. Right? <laughs> so it's nice that um, Mr. Sapra, the consulate general, uh, the Indian consulate here in Birmingham, is gracing us with his presence. Uh, he's an old friend, and we're happy that he can also say a few words. Okay, okay. Right. Guru Devji, worshipful Lord Mayor, Lady Mayoress, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I've been attending the uh, Hare Krishna gatherings each year and it's always a pleasure. I get charged with peace and happiness every year that I come and attend these functions. And it's, I'm being a representative of the government of India. I feel very proud that we have uh, the saints and the gods whom we worship in India who are spent, uh, spreading the message of peace and happiness all over the world. And I'm indeed happy that in Birmingham we have a fairly large gathering. And we thank Guru Devji for coming and blessing us each year. I wish you all the best for the year. Thank you and the future. Hare Krishna, as the right worshipful Lord Mayor knows, Birmingham is very proud of its multicultural and its multi-faith community. And our theme this evening, based on the principle of Achinta Veda Veda Tattva, simultaneous one indifference, is the concept of unity and diversity. Uh, we're not a stranger to Sri Om Prakash Sharma, MBE. He is the um, president of the National Council of Hindu Temples, and I believe he's also chairing the National Interfaith uh, Committee in England, and we also invite him to speak. He knows Bhagavad Gita as well. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Hari Swasti Prajabhya Paripayanta Nyayen Margen Mayam Mahisha Go Brahmne Bho Shubhamastu Nityam Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Siyaram me sab jug jane karu pranam jor jug paani O oh Lord, your creation may live in peace and harmony. The divine message spread by the holy saints may be respected. The sovereign may rule with justice and I see the Lord's presence in this divine gathering. I bow to all of you. Your Holiness, brothers and sisters, allow me first to say something little bit to, about the Hindu religion. Though you are all familiar of this religion, but still, I will dare to speak a few words regarding the Hinduism. Though Hinduism name was not in our scripture, this was given by the foreigners. Persians gave this name, seeing the people living other side of the river Indus are Hindus. In our scriptures, it is called Snatan Dharma or Eternal Dharma. Dharma, the translation for Dharma is not available in the Oxford Dictionary at all. Dharma is a way of life. It is not any religion or a sect. This is for the whole universe. 
so from the Svatan Dharma, therefore, is no conflict with any religion at all. In our Vedas, in our scriptures, it says, Anubhadra Kitva Jantu Vishwata. Let the noble thoughts come from all corners of the world. It's not a static religion, it's a dharma. Anywhere, anything we find good, we will accept it. And also, it's not so rigid that we will not accept any other religion. So as I said, dharma is a way of life in which anything good we will find, we will accept it and we will adopt it. Though our Vedas, scriptures, which were revealed from the Lord itself, you could say, is for the whole universe. If you start to read any of our scriptures, you will not find anything against any religion. Our latest text is over 5,000 years ago. Lord Krishna appeared on this earth. And one of his verses in that Bhagavad Gita, it says, Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavti bharata abhyutha nama dharmasya tadatma nam sajamyaham Paritranai sadhunam vinashai chitushkritam dharma sansthap narthai sambhamami yuge yuge. To rescue the righteous souls oppressed, to break the might of evil ones, to set at right the world stream flow, age after age I appear on this earth. Sometimes himself may appear, sometimes he may send his messenger, just like the Christian may say, the Lord's, God's only son, Christ, is appeared on this earth there. So we have no conflict with anybody at all. Whoever's preaching the gospel of Lord, I would say, whatever Lord's commandments are, we will accept him. And as we see unity in diversity, it's a unity in diversity in Hinduism as well. In one Sanskrit shloka it says, Avasudeva Kutumbhakam. The whole world is one family. It's one family, it's his cre creation. It's Lord's creation. So we are all brothers and sisters, one to another. So it's a great prayer and privilege to be amongst this divine gathering. With the presence of His Holiness, we will be charged again and try to follow the teaching of our scriptures, our holy scriptures. It doesn't matter which prophet or which saint has recited those words. All, none of the religion teaches us any hate. They all say love. Love is God. And that is the message is being spread with, by His Holiness. And we are grateful to His Holiness who has come to bless us again here. I will not take much of your time because we have got many distinguished speakers here. They will be giving their views there. I myself, being on the Interfaith Network, we have got all the religions, we speak to them, we meet, and we discuss our problems and so on. Besides that, Lord Mayor, I have responsibility something. There is, you might have, well, you know definitely, there is an inner city religious council, which is chaired by the uh, uh, minister from the deputy prime minister's office there. So I have honored to sit on that body where we 
discuss all our problems and our projects and so on there with all the ministers, we call them. And there, again, this is the message of love from our community. And on behalf of National Council of Hindu Temples, United Kingdom, I bring the greetings and goodwill message to all of you. Thank you very much. He's always Um, in interfaith circles, the terminology host community is often used. And I like this uh, terminology for the Christian community. One, because there's the concept of the Eucharist or the host. And also, in a, in a sense, we are a guest in the Christian world here. And it's a very tolerant world that we should appreciate. And we're very happy that uh, uh, Dr. Chris Ewer, who is a scholar and a representative of the Church of England, is here today to grace us and greet Guru Dave. So Dr. Ewer, please, from the Church of England, please give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Friends, thank you very much for inviting me, and to call me the host on this occasion, I think, is, is too strong a term, but uh, in the name of the community that I represent here in Birmingham, I give you warm greetings and many welcomes for those who are visitors to this city. I bring you greetings, not just in the name of the Bishop of Birmingham, for whom I work, but also through him in the name of all the Christian communities here in this city. You will be aware, of course, that our city has changed enormously in the last 40 or 50 years, and we are anticipating much greater change in the next 20 or 30 years. And so we are living in very exciting times in this city, as we are learning new ways to be one city, one community of humanity here, but with many different faiths represented, many different cultures, many different ways of being human, but ultimately there is only one humanity and therefore we have much to learn one from another. And so we rejoice in this diversity in our midst. We in England and indeed in Europe, we need a great deal the wisdom of how to live with diversity and yet with one common humanity because our European history of dealing with religious diversity has not been good. You will know that through many centuries, the last 500 years especially, our history of dealing with difference even within our own Christian community has been far from an ideal, far from a model of one common humanity. And so we need to learn, and we need to learn from the spiritual wisdom of other faith traditions. And so the message that I bring to you is that each one of us have a very important role to play in shaping the future of our city. Because a city like Birmingham is today, and like it will be in 20 or 30 years time, has never before existed in Europe. We have never before had a city like this, and what it will be like depends a great deal on how much we can all work together as people of faith, as people with a vision to create a society here which is fit and worthy for human beings to live and something that we can live to our children and our grandchildren. And so I welcome you all very much, and I pray that you will share with us your spiritual wisdom in order to help us to learn how better we can live in unity here and respecting our diversity. I thank you very much. The, the next guest I'm going to introduce is one, because they're closest to the microphone, so no one feel diminished, please. <laughs> and two, they're very, very good friends of mine. Um, 
This is a wonderful community known as the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association. And we have both their national representative and their local representatives here. They have invited me to their programs and they have treated me like a king. And I'm very much impressed with their very strong faith and their very progressive understanding of the Quran, who by their association I actually read uh, for the first time in my life. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Tahir Selby as the speaker representing. Also my dear friend uh, Zed Ahmed is here and Bazir. We know each other for a long time, but we'll ask Tahir Selby to speak a few words. Thank you very much. He's a good preacher. Your Holiness, Your Worship, Lord Mayor, Lady Mayors, my dear distinguished guests and all my friends here, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. I haven't come to give any speeches or anything like this. I've come to learn. And I think it's very, very important that we do try to come to such meetings to find out about different people, different ways, different customs and so on and so forth. As Jeff has told you, we was delighted that he was able to come to our meeting and when he invited us we was delighted to come here to meet you all and it's a great pleasure for us to come and to meet you and to learn from your ways and what you do. We have in our community one saying which is love for all, hatred for none and I'm sure this is something which we can all strive for because everyone wants peace. But the best way of achieving peace is to learn about each other. When we have these barriers, that creates hatred. So this sort of meeting where you invited guests to come to meet you is a very good way of breaking down those barriers. And I appreciate that. And I'm very pleased that you've given us this invitation to come. So thank you very much. Aslanikum. Assalamu alaikum. We also have Elder and Sister Hunter of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. They have a strong speaking, a preaching spirit. All over the world, I've been in so many countries, and I've always met a representative of their church spreading the good word, and I'm happy to see them here today. And if you would please also come, and Mr. Hunter Harris. Thank you. We are honored to be invited as guests here tonight. We express from our presidency of the Western Europe area their regards, their best wishes. Unable to be here tonight, but they sent with us their regards. We appreciate the courtesies that we have received over the years from your people and we wish you the very best as you celebrate your festival. We don't totally understand your culture and your methods of worship, but what we do understand is a universal language. And that universal language is love, peace, devotion, and respect. And we have that for you, and we feel that we're sitting at the feet of a great leader. Welcome to this area, and may the Lord bless you again. Uh, at the risk of committing the offense of omission, I'm introducing our last guest, and if there was anyone else I was supposed to introduce but miss, please forgive my offenses now. But we have um, from the Interfaith Peace Workers of Birmingham, Susan Halliday, and uh, she is always working towards this unity and diversity, and she will also say a few words, please. <laughs> Your Holiness, brothers and sisters of Birmingham, what a joy to be here and to feel this joy and love. 
sometimes I think interfaith work is better done without words. I work um, for many organizations. Uh, one of the organizations I work for is the Peace Promise Initiative which is an international organization um, bringing money and um, understanding and recognition to peace workers throughout the world. At the moment, particularly focusing my work in Jerusalem with the Palestinian and the Israeli communities, um, no, but also including Christians and Druze there as well. I'm also the founder and chairperson of Women for Peace UK and um, if anyone wants to talk to me about that afterwards. But really it's my joy always to be where there are people from different faiths coming together because I know this is where world peace starts with us in our hearts today. Thank you so much for, again, for coming and engaging me a little bit in devotional service. If not for you, I would be totally lost. And I don't think I'm the only one that feels this way. So um, we ask Shiloh Gurdjieff to speak. And, and when, when is it? Do We're not trying to throw you out. No, <laughs> if, if you you can, okay. Well, you can stay if you like. <laughs> yes, at the other occasion. We also have uh, Balabi is here again this evening. Where is she? Is Balabi here? Wave your hand. Oh, she's. Why are you back there? You should be here with the Bajan group. What? <laughs> Just Balabi. In, in our scriptures, it's, it's mentioned that even a moment's association with a pure devotee is worth millions and millions of lifetimes of experience in this material world. Um, I've experienced this in the early part of my life when I first met His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. With just a little bit of association, I understood what it would be to be in the presence of a Jesus Christ or a Buddha or someone who was actually enlightened on a particular path. And now by the mercy of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, we're taking me further guided by His great friend and very, very advanced devotee, Savan Grace, Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj. Um, Gurudev, there should be some bhajan before you speak. Yeah? No? Huh? Oh. Gurudev is asking that Bhaktivedanta Ashram Maharaj say a few words this time. Do you want to come this way, Maharaj, or just. Maharaj, Maharaj, Om Gyana Timirandasya Gananjana Shalakayam Chakshun Militam Dinam Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Vanchakalpaturubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhyevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So first I would like to offer my most respect Onto the lotus feet of my dear Guru Dave, Om Vishnu Pad, as Dr. Sata Shishimad, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And also, I'd like to welcome and offer my respects unto worshipable Lord Mayor and his wife, also the 
Mr. Sapra, I know him mm -hmm. personally over the years. I forget his title. <laughs> Councillor General. Counsel, Councillor General of the country of India. And also our good friend, the representative from the Church of England. And our friends here, who we're just meeting now for the first time. O.P. Sharma, who I've known for about Practically as long as I've been a Hare Krishna, I've known O.P. Sharma and his good wife, who always I'm ringing, trying to contact Mr. O.P. Sharma. And I also like to welcome our friends here from Latter-day Saints, and also um, my friend Mrs. Holiday, uh, who I've also known for over a decade, I believe. And also I'd like to thank all devotees and friends for coming and give me a chance to say something. So, I feel very honored to speak in front of a distinguished assembly here. And I thank you for all coming to help us to start our festival. And it is very, very nice that especially the leader of Birmingham and also religious leaders of the Birmingham community are coming here to welcome Srila Gurudev to, because Srila Gurudev is traveling all over the world as an ambassador coming from Goloka Vrindavan to bring the message of peace and love. And here in Birmingham, as has been said by many of the speakers, it is a very diverse community. People from different cultures, different races, different religions, all working together. But how this will actually have some real fruition is when there's real spiritual guidance. So it's very nice that the mayor, he himself is coming here because this is acknowledgement of the necessity for that spiritual guidance which is needed in all sectors of life, especially amongst those who are taking political um, responsibility. In the Vedic um, history, we see that the leaders, the rishis, the um, kings, rajas, they're called uh, raja rishis. They were but at the same time, they were um, highly evolved transcendentalists. That they always took advice from the religious leaders. And in this way, they were able to rule over their kingdoms um, with their political expertise, but at the same time understanding that the real welfare for the people was their spiritual um, elevation. If we have a society of um, people that have so much diversity, economic development, good um, material facilities, but at the same time there's not that spiritual um, understanding, that spiritual basis which is there, then ultimately that society will crumble. It will not last. Because that which brings moral value in a very substantial way is coming from that spiritual substance. So. My message is that leaders of community here, that we come together and we see how we can take from each other those spiritual principles which are universal to all and understand that ultimately that we all have one source. There's one God, whether you call him Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, my country, Nigeria, we say Chineke or Lorum, um, different names, but one God. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the source of achieving that God is the process of love, the process of devotion. Different names and different religious paths, but Bhakti. And this is universal. So wherever that fruit of love of God is there, regardless of what external trapping that it has, then we should take that. We should judge a tree by the fruits. Where practicing a particular religious process, we see that, that um, those people practicing, they're actually developing real qualities, real saintly qualities, saint qualities of love of God. That also, along with these saintly qualities, then there's truthfulness, peacefulness, equanimity, these secondary qualities are coming. Then we should honor that and we, see, we should see how we can learn from that and also progress. We should not be 
so much stuck on the external trappings, but we should deal with the essence. Mr. O.P. Sharma is saying the word Dharma. Mm -hmm. That Dharma means that intrinsic quality, which is there from the makeup of um, a substance. Just like the Dharma of water is liquidity, the Dharma of fire is heat. So the Dharma of the living entity, the living entity is not black, the living entity is not white, the living entity is not Hindu, the living entity is not Muslim, the living entity is not Christian, but the living entity is a minute part and parcel of that supreme personality of God. Whether you call him Allah, Buddha, Jehovah, Yahweh, what have you. And the intrinsic nature is to love. And that loving propensity is manifest through service. So we can all learn together how we can love, how we can serve that one God. And by watering the root of the tree, meaning what serving God, then ultimately we'll be doing hum um, service to humanity. But if we do so much service to humanity, but we don't water the root of the tree, if we water the leaves, if we water the, the branches, if we even water the trunk, Huh? then the tree will not survive. We have to see how we can water the, the, the root. And this is Dharma. This is the Dharma of the living entity to develop this love for God. So I'm very happy that we're all coming, especially Worship of Mayor. Huh? And we hope that we can also give something to you that you'll be able to take and utilize in helping the people of this um, very nice city of Birmingham. Thank you very much. Gurave Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Itadale Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tadavaktaya Namunama First of all, my humble obeisances and the lotus feet of my spiritual guru. Ang Vishnu Parsi Shumad Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Goswami Maharaj and my Shiksha Guru Ang Vishnu Parsi Shumad Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj. Oh. Perhaps you know that my English is broken. I can speak very well in Indian languages. But if you want to hear my broken English, yeah. then I will speak. But you should understand the meaning yourself. I'm very happy that you have all managed all the representative of all community in Birm from Birmingham, especially mayor. He represents from top to bottom everyone. So I think that all are here from Birmingham. <laughs> also representative of India, a general translator is here. So Indian all are here. <laughs> Also, I am happy that the representative of Christianity or our Sanatan Dharmist, my brother Muslims, Sikhs, and all are here. I heard them and I become very happy. Universal or unity in diversity, I heard. I also appreciate my Om Prakash Ji that nothing to tell me, he has tell every, told everything that I wanted to speak. <laughs> because he is a learned person, he knows, he has studied Indian scriptures. And firstly, I became happy that he quoted something from our Veda Upanishadas and 
He told that every anywhere it is had not written Hindu word, even in Veda, Sanatani, Arya, like this. So someone may think that we are sectarians, but never. We believe that we are in the family of one God. All humans, not only human, someone think that all humans are oh, the family of God. But I think even grasses, plants, creepers, animals, fishes, all created by God and all our children of the same one God. So why we should not have love and affection for all creepers, cows, animals, hogs, pigs, elephants, not only humans, but we see that so many good instructions in Vedas, in Quran Sharif, in Bible, but we do disobey to some extent. We think that all the animals and birds and uh, only to take Maldi. There should be no love and affection. He told that God is love. Love is God. In Indian, by the culture, it has been everywhere written like this. Sarve Sukhina Bhavantu. He quoted that. All should be happy. What all? Not only humans, but even creepers, all animals, hawks, pigs, and fishes, all. Because I told you that all they are in family of same God. And as he told that there is no so many go gods, supreme Lord. Only one, as he told, God, Allah, Khuda, uh, Brahma, Bhagavan, and other what it, Yahweh and others. Same, but according to language and different oh, mm, cultures. 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 Oh, he has been called in other. Allah means what is the meaning of Allah? Oh, greatest. Brihat. Brihatvat, Brihnatvat. Who is the most what? In him all creation, all universe are there. In his every pore of pore? Skin. Yes, skin. skin. Oh. Oh man, millions and millions of uh, universe are there. In a moment he can destroy all universe. And in a moment he can Yes. Create new and new millions of universe. Hmm? So if we have love to same God, hmm, then why to quarrel? Same God, one God, but we are quarreling. We don't know what is love and affection. If there will be affection and love for one God, then we should have love to each other. And that is why it has been told. Sarve Sukhina Bhavantu. All should be happy. But who is all? Also in Vedas, it has been told. Vedas means don't you think that in Hindus any is creeper. Vedas means knowledge. What knowledge? Who, we, who are we? Is super soul? What is our relations? Body is mortal. It is a bag of urine, latrine, and blood, and all these things. This is not so. We are not this. <coughs> we are. We are part and parcel of the same supreme Lord. Top to bottom, all animals, creepers, or oh, human demigods, all, and his. Advitiyam ekam eva advitiyam. What we see in this world? Oh, only his expansion, like this. Expansion of his power. Hmm? So, 
I think it will be better that we should know what is happiness. Hmm? And we should try to follow really Vedas, Bible, Quran Sharif and other books. I think the teachings of all are like same, some difference of languages. Hmm? So in Vedas it has been told, Nalpa Sukham Bhuma Eva Eva Bhigijyasri Tabyam Oh, worldly things, they cannot give us happiness. Supreme Lord is oh, Ananda and Anandamaya too, both. He is himself happiness and he is himself the container of happiness. all akhand happiness. Now, being the part and parcel of the same Supreme Lord, we have divided this earth. Oh, this is my country, this is my country. But sun is also one, air is one, everything is one. Then we should also be one unity in diversity, certainly. So if Supreme Lord is Anandamaya, Ananda, He is happiness and container of happiness abode of all happiness. <coughs> then, if we are the children of the same God, then we are also, uh, what? Same thing, part. That we are also like happiness, embodiment of all these things. Only the difference between Supreme Lord and we, that is his Bibhu, we are Anu, we are Minute. Minute. And he is? Very big. Unlimited. Unlimited. Akhanda Tattva. Hmm? So we must be like him. But unfortunately we have deviated from that Supreme Lord. Now we have forgotten that we, who are we? We think that all oh, this physical body, material body is myself. And by that, oh, Something collected, money, position, gold, or other things, oh, they can make me happy. But really this is wrong. Hmm? Because our body is mortal. All collectively, the, all the scientists and doctors of the whole universe, they cannot stop our old days. You should always rem remind this. Remember that we will have to be one day after 10 years, after 20 years, after 100 years, you will have to old. All beauty and power will go away. You cannot walk without the help of any stick. And after some time you will die. Depending on everything, what you have collected in this world by this body, it will not save you. Only what will see, say, oh, if you are really serving Supreme Lord, He is very attractive, He is very handsome, beautiful. Hmm? I think in Bible it has been written, God created man after His own image. What is the meaning? God created man after his own image. If he has no image, then why it in Bible it has been written? But his body is transcendental, not mortal. To some extent, what we think, but it is wrong. Also, God means G-O-D, G generator of this world. Oh. Operator. Operator of this world and the destructor of the whole world. He nourishes all. He supports all. If he cannot be, can, cannot have a Self. form, transcendental form. If he is not merciful, if he is nirakar, hmm? nirgun, 
No. Oh mercy. Then what is the use of worshiping that bogus god? <laughs> he is. He has power to be to make a form. He is very merciful. He has created whole world. Why? Because we were deviated from him. His power, illusory Maya, has kept us in prison of this body and in this. So we should always remember this. In India, in Vedas, in Upanishad, there is a very small upakhyan, like a history. Once. Uh, I will tell. Uh, what? Uh, Upakhyan. That once there was a high class of sage that he told Rishi Muni, his name was Jagyabal. In the council of a very elevated Janak Maharaj, he was realized so. He knew, he used to know. Who am I? Jivatma and Super Soul. Once he was sitting with his two wives, Maitreyi and Jagyavan, Katyayani. He told to his wife, My dear wives, now I am too old. I have collected so much gold, position, cows, so good ashram abode of living. Now I, I want to divide it in you, you. I have given you, I am giving, distributing my whole wealth, property, property everything in two. And uh, I have given also children, so you should be happy. And let me permit that I should go to forest to meditate Supreme Lord. <coughs> One Kantani told, I am very happy that now you are giving your whole wealth to us and children also you have given. And a wife's duty is to help his husband. So if you are going, going to uh, meditate Supreme Lord, oh very gladly you can go. But second wife, Maitri told, I have a question. Give answer and then you can go happily. And she told, you have given, you want to give us gold, position, your all wealth, you have given us children. And you are telling that you should be happy with all these things and let me permit to go to forest. But I, my question is that, oh these golds, wealth, children's, wife, oh, and position that you had, they could not give you happiness of your life or they gave. If you are satisfied by that, that they can give me happiness, that as you are telling, then why you are going? What, what, for? And then, oh. Jagya Balkarishi became very happy, embraced her wife, his wife, and told, Oh, certainly, gold, wealth, reputation, any position are all nashwar. Mortal. Mortal. Temporary. They cannot give us real happiness of our life. Only this reservoir of our happiness, Ananda, by serving his lotus feet, meditating, chanting in this world, and having full uh, faith on him, anyone can be happy. Anywhere is not happiness. Only in the lotus feet of Supreme Lord there is happiness. If you are chanting, remembering, Oh, he may bless you, that you should be happy. So in Quran also we see, Inna laha khalaka men surat hi. Surat means? The form. 